What is up, my fellow train nerds, Railworks fans, and train sim fans alike? Those of you that are old enough to remember when it was Railworks. I got a fun review today. Fun in my opinion, anyway, since it didn't come from DTG. But this is the Great Northern Cascadian Line offered on Railworks America. This was done by an older developer named G-Trax. Some of you probably know from the Bessemer and Lake Erie line when it came out and then was taken off. That's another ball game for a different video, but today we're gonna do this. I haven't seen very many people do up any videos of this one and I figured I'd do one. Cause honest to gosh, it's a pretty nice route. If I remember right, this is effectively g tracks backdate of the Mariah's Pass, I believe. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I, I'm not dead certain. I personally don't know a whole lot about the Great Northern. I am a Texas guy at heart, and there's very little Texas content for real work, so I'm going to work with what I got. So here we're at Sky Comish again. I'm sorry if I butcher these names. I have no honest to gosh clue how you say them. So we're just going to go with it. The route runs from Skycomish to Applewood. Fairly long route. And you'll see it's electrified. It's one of the very few railworks routes that we have for the United States that is electrified from this time period. Now we do have a lot of the uh, all the Northeast Corridor stuff, the Amtrak and whatnot, but you you can't there's not a lot for it. There's not a lot for this time period. There's not a lot as far as the electric world goes we don't get to see much of the early electrics from the u.s that were prominent in the uh the north northeast areas and this is a pretty decent representation now the stock you see in this yard is not everything you're going to get with this route just throw that disclaimer out there right now like uh this Empire Builder said, obviously, that's a separate DLC from Steam. I have edited these scenarios. This GP7 over here is from Great Northerner. The Machine Rail Mastodons back there in the back, which really fit this route nicely. But what you'll get with this route is these electrics. I don't know what this is up here on top just kind of throws me off but you'll get two of these electrics one in the uh, Empire Builder colors and the other one in the early plain green we'll take a look at those in a second back out here most of your rolling stock is also done by Great Northerner. You'll see a lot of this if you go on his website, Golden Age of Rail. See pretty much all of this as freeware. So none of this is really new per se. Really and truly what's new to this route is these locomotives right here. And there's also a Great Northern 484 steam locomotive. I 100% forgot to put down to show in this scenario. It does not come with the route, but there is a tab on Railworks America specifically for add-ons for this Cascadian route, and one of them is a freeware steam locomotive that is effectively a reworked, uh, not really reworked, a slightly changed up version of g tracks old SPNS northern pack that is available on steam they change a couple of the details around and it's got some different sound files should you opt to download this audio updates that are available on rwa but 
that I'm not counting that because it doesn't technically come with the base route. It is a freeware addition. What will come with it is just these electrics right here. <laughs> and all this various rolling stock. You'll get a set of these baggage and heavyweights at this point. Nothing entirely new. We've seen, again, Great Northerner has these free. You'll get these in green and the Empire Builder colors. And then you'll get a handful of box cars, obviously, and early tanks. Yeah, let's hop over to the locomotive and take a peek around it. You'll have to excuse my uh, my use of the F4 HUD. I have I am a steam guy at heart. I know very little about how electrics operate. Most of the electrics I have in game, I couldn't tell you a thing on how they operate. But to power up this locomotive, it does have to be in gear. <coughs> First off, forward, reverse doesn't matter can't be in neutral. If you put it in neutral as you see, panographs go down and you have no lights, no nothing. So if you start off the scenario in free roam or any of the other scenarios and it's dark outside, you got to put it in gear before you get power. Interior view, it's not great. Per today's standards, this would have been excellent texture-wise oh, eight years ago, maybe. I mean, these are... It's definitely older. It's definitely... I don't know. Exterior-wise, it, it looks better than it does inside, in my opinion. Inside, it could use some touch up it looks very minecrafty i guess very blocky very square not very smooth curves i mean even here you can see straight 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 it's definitely an older look by today's standards by a long 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 shot but i'm not going to complain too hard and nitpick on it too much because for the price of the whole pack it's not bad and it's one of only what two three American electrics that we have in game the E33 correct me again I it'll be a while before I can do a video on that one cause I couldn't tell you five things on how to make that thing work and the other being the old Pennsylvania GG1 which Ed yeah it's old <laughs> but we do have moving windows that's a fun fun little gimmick pretty typical on more modern items for railworks now opening front doors which do translate outside which is kind of kind of cool and it is a double ended locomotive so you can flip between the cabs now one thing that does irk me is this is this is your MU stand for a multiple unit operation, right? When you connect up the locomotives, they didn't bother to include hoses. There's nothing to go between the locomotives to make them multi operation. Which I found kinda weird. It looks kinda off. But, you know, like I said, it's an older, older model. <laughs> and they are time period specific as far as detail wise. What this doohickey is up here, I have no clue, but it's there. And your headlight is centered on the locomotive more on its own little pedestal here. <laughs> as opposed to the early model where the headlight's mounted up on top. You don't have whatever that doohickey is hanging off the front. Uh, I don't see any more real significant changes. 
yeah there's no other real significant changes they're not massively different sound wise they're going to be the same performance wise they're going to be the same speaking of sounds are all right what the, I, I have no idea what that squealing is in the background but where am i right here set our switches so that when i pull away we don't run into anything weird Boom, 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 boom. That should put us out of the yard. This is a pretty big root. And it's most definitely different from the old, the, the newer version of the Mariah's Pass. I guess I could have looked here to tell you. Apple Yard. Sky, Sky Comish. The Apple Yard. That's your link. But. Uh, you'll notice the split up here what made this root backdated that they had to do so much work on is the root split around mountain we didn't go through the mountains like we do today or we didn't just completely avoid them altogether you go around them and up here this is one of those odd cases where they did blow through the mountain and go tunnel straight through it this is one really long tunnel this is why the electrics were big on this route because you, you wouldn't run a you wouldn't want to run a steam locomotive through there you'd pretty much suffocate your crew but this this right here was the big prominent factor on what made the great northern electrify this route anyway let's back over to here and go back to the locomotive yeah. <laughs> sound wise there all right. There's no no real difference between inside and out. It still sounds the same inside and out. Brake noise. It's an older brake noise. But we do have automatic pantograph selection so when you change gears the pantograph will automatically slip in and out you can flick on your marker lights gauge lights cab lights as is typical flipping on your cab lights and still having shadows turned on in your settings will drop your frame rates a little bit not much not as much as newer content does but it is going to drop it a little bit. It's just typical. I tend to run without the cab lights and just leave the gauge lights off. <laughs> but here's your headlight switch. I, I don't like how G Tracks limited your your view. This is as far up as you can look. This is far down, and this is far over. And it bothers me. It's like you can't zoom in and read your headlight selection you have to zoom out to be able to see it and you zoom in oh never notice that zoom in and your switch disappears okay huh anywho yeah I don't I'm not fond of this it's one of the killers for me with the old GG ones as well they did the same thing with that model you, you can only look so far in any direction it's not something you would think about not not having until you use other models and realize how much you look backwards, up, around, whatnot. But there's a headlight. It is a gyro light. And there is no turning the gyro light motor on and off. It it's it's automatically on. As you can see. I don't think Yeah, you can't really see it from the front. You go to the side and you see the... Huh. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, this is definitely an older model. The headlight itself is an old... Old textured... Photo texture 3D dill. 
and the headlight flare is stuck out just a little bit further than the model itself and the headlight flare is what moves instead of the headlight itself so it's kind of it's not game breaking it's just one of those things you'll stop and go huh kind of chuckle at it the marker lights are all right i mean you can't you can't change the color on them unfortunately so you're stuck with green either direction which is eh, a little frustrating if you're a nitpicker i don't care all that much but i know some people it kind of irks they like to see that like brick kits or machine rail quality where you can swap through your colors but it is what it is let's get moving a little bit let's see what it sounds like under power it's not I expected it to be louder not gonna lie it is an electric electrics uh, from a side you tend to think electrics gonna be quiet right like a car or something but these old electrics would be real loud they'd have a deep almost grumbly sound you can check out videos of the Illinois Railway Museum's little Joe locomotive to get an idea what an old electric would sound like but they're definitely not not quiet not quiet like this notice how you can hear even inside you can hear these f7s idling yeah we're speeding it's all right chances of slamming out of these switches are so slim but you can still hear that f7 <laughs> you sh should yeah the diesel engine should sound louder but as it is just moving right now you hear the track noise more than you do the actual engine running which kinda irks me kinda bothers me it's not horrendous but it, it could use something it's very 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 quiet it is kinda nice so you can you have a micro adjustable throttle unlike diesels where you gotta go through your notches so it is a bit easier to control your speed especially on these mountain routes with this locomotive don't load behind it <laughs> if somebody could explain to me what this regen, regen brake is that'd be awesome I have no clue what it is Granted, I haven't done a whole, whole lot of research into these outside of just a quick glance over it. Your typical locomotive and then the printed brakes, Sanders, Bell. I didn't do that. I love the Bell sound. That is the one thing on this model I adore. It sounds like an old Bell should. Very deep very pronounced on a main line yeah I can give you guys an idea of what it sounds like when you actually throttle up yeah this is what I was talking about full throttle there's no noise hey yeah I don't know what to tell you in no world would this thing be this quiet especially with a wide open throttle these things are also not fast it's another f entertaining deal these are not quite like the electrics of the northeast northeast yeah northeast corridor where you'll be doing you know 90 to 120 miles an hour realistically on level ground you'd probably top out at about 55 miles an hour 50 going up this grade with a hill and you do have some pretty steep grades it'll be 
anywhere from flat level ground all the way up to about I think two and a half percent is the steepest grade along this route. Now, obviously, I'm I'm cruising right now, but I who cares? <laughs> That's not the worst wiper sound I've heard. But yeah, killer throttle. It's not a gradual braking hiss, it just, it's like a uh, sound trigger, you heard a certain spot, and it makes a sound trigger off. <laughs> it's not as smooth as I would like, but like I said, this is, this is an old model, this is, ah, we're going to roll backwards now. This is probably, yeah. you know, I don't remember when this came out, honestly. I've had this route for a hot minute. I just can't remember for the life of me when this came out. This is my first video. Sorry, guys. I'm 100% making it up as I go along. Don't know what to tell you. Try to improve my. Oh, that's where your squealing noise is. Just makes a squealing noise while we're sitting here. Interesting. But yeah, I'll try to improve my video making skills as time goes on. But right now, this is what I got. It's what you guys gotta live with. Sorry. Hmm? If you guys like it, I'll do some more videos. I enjoy fiddling around with especially the older content, the content that tends to get overlooked with Train Simulator Classic, I guess it's called now. So when you guys hear me say Railworks, I'm referring to Train Sim Classic. I'm I have been with this game since you could buy the disc called the Railworks from Walmart for twenty bucks. So <laughs> I've been around for a hot minute with this. I just never decided to do videos. I never got all that big into it. And with recent years of Dovetail's lack of quality fixes and bug updates for Train Simulator, I, I fell out of the scene for quite some time. And I still, I come and go with it. If I've had a a day of constant notorious out of air out of memory errors I, I tend to get frustrated and leave which is another thing about this route with the stock content on this route I really can't say I've had the out of memory error very often as with some content and some routes you'll get where they're practically impossible to load up without getting that air five ten minutes into it or even getting it to load at all I really haven't had that issue with this route it runs really smooth I built my computer to run this game so I can't say whether or not on an average gaming PC this will run well but on my computer I average pretty high frames most of your models and details and such throughout this route are older some of you that remember the old Durango and Silverton route that G-Tracks did you'll you'll recognize a lot of their trees and such where they're uh, they're 3D and they're not I guess they're not quite like this right here where it's flat and it rotates with you 2D but they're not quite 3D in the sense that they've got their own little objects going on they're just trees with branches and then flat textures applied to them which eh, it does the job for a filled in detailed route for what it is it's a large long route that 
still keeps your frame rates relatively high, which is something you can't say for a lot of a lot of the newer long long routes or even some of the older ones. Some of you remember the Donner's Pass, which even today will murder frame rates. But uh, yeah, there's the G Chacks Great Northern Cascadian route. You pick it up on Railworks America. I don't know how much it is anymore. This, like I said, I, I got this a long, long, long while ago. And I just started making videos, so I, I couldn't tell you all of the fun details. It's not a bad route overall. If somebody wanted to go through and update the graphics on it, update the scenery detail, it could probably stand it, especially for today's today's uh, expectations I guess compared to stuff like the even the B and O branch line but for for what it is it's it's a pretty nice route I get a lot of fun out of it I get a lot of entertainment and there's a plethora of great northern content available to really That's a new sound. There's a plethora of Great Northern content to really, really uh, mix well on this route, I guess one could say. I don't know. Complement it. Obviously, you've got actual dovetail DLCs like that Empire Builder you set. You guys saw back there in the yard back here, but you also have on Great Northerner's website, Golden Age of Rail, you've got, he's got a lot of Great Northern locomotives, SD7s, Jeeps, and <laughs> such that mix in pretty well. And obviously, Machine Rail's a Mastodon goes excellently on this route. Although, my fair warning, you are not going to pull a long train up this mountain with it. The grades on this route are very, very steep, very drastic, and... The little Mastodon does not pull all that well up here, so don't expect to pull a long train. I three heavyweight coaches are about what I've managed to get it to do and maintain any kind of speed. But is that there's all oh, the RSC GP9 pack? It's old as dirt, but sound mods make all the difference in the world. That goes good on here. SW 1200s, Great Northern, 44 ton switchers. Really any of the above. I believe there's there's an RS1. It's really, really, really complements this route well that you can get in Great Northern livery. The RS1. I'll do a video on later on as a separate standalone because you can either acquire the RS1 separately by itself from Railworks America or you can pick it up with their Riverside, Riverside Waterton and Atlantic route which I highly highly recommend it's an excellent route but we'll just back our way back down to Sky Commission and conclude our video here <laughs> It's it's an entertaining horn, I gotta say. Definitely better than the typical single tone horns that Dovetail likes to reuse over and over and over on any American content that has a single tone horn, but it's not the best. It's not the worst. It does fade in and out as it gets closer and further away from you. Oops. Let's see. Can you hear it from here? No. How about here? Nope. Right about there. It doesn't. It's not a very gradual tone out. It's kind of an all of a sudden, there it is. And then it gradually gets louder. 
which could use some work but I'm not gonna complain like I said it's not the worst I've ever heard and it's not looped as is ever so typical on some content we see even now where you know one quick pull and the horn's got a three second loop on it it's frustratingly upsetting but doesn't do that one quick toot pretty good. God, I love that bell. It's awesome. There's a lot of switching, a lot of passenger, freight, long, short, local. You name it, you can probably do it on this route, honestly. There's quite a bit that can Quite a bit on here that honestly could tickle the fancy of just about anybody. Slow speed, high speed, obviously up here in the mountains you're going to have a slower speed. I think the max for a good portion of this line up here is about 25 to 30 miles an hour. But once you get out here, the mountain grades kind of flatten out, levels out. <laughs> Yeah, that's about it. <laughs>